Good morning, and welcome to our 10 before 10 this morning. I'm joined here by Michael, and uh, we're anticipating Sam joining us here in a minute uh, to give you an announcement about our worship Wednesdays. Um, but until he does, we'll go ahead and jump in this morning. So, Michael, if you could share a little bit about about the message coming up and just what's going to take place the rest of this morning. Right, so we've been talking about the secret to unlocking joy, and we're going to be in Philippians chapter 3, uh, verses 12 through 21. Uh, I think Jamie is going to be the, the main event today, yeah, and uh, he's looking forward to that, yeah, and is. we're looking forward to hearing what God has to, to tell us through him. Yeah, definitely looking forward to that as we continue to step into Philippians and just how we're and just how we can unlock the joy in our life despite our circumstances. Uh, but before we jump into our announcements and kind of tell you what's going to take place the rest of the time, uh, Sam, our worship leader, is going to join us here just for a minute, and he has a quick announcement for you. Yeah, so uh, this week uh, for Worship Wednesday, just wanted to we want to do something a little bit different. Um, so hopefully you've been tuning into those. We've really enjoyed uh, having those, making those. Yeah, it's been really cool. Um, you know, kind of a different uh, opportunity for our worship team. Uh, but this week we're actually going to do something a little different. Uh, we're actually going to get together in the room that we've been in, um, and we're going to go live for a little while. Uh, we're going to do a couple of planned songs, but then we're also, we're going to try this, okay? We're going to try to take requests in the comments. Uh, so if you have a song uh, that you would be interested, that you would like to hear us do, uh, then you can drop it in the comments when we go live. Now, I'll go ahead and say we may not get to every song because, you know, obviously it takes a little while and we're doing these off the cuff uh, and we'll try to do as many as we can. Um, but at the same time, uh, we just want to do something a little different, um, just to try it, give it a shot and see what happens. So we hope you guys tune in, find some requests in there for us um, that we of songs that we currently do, and we'll see what we can do. So, yeah, we're excited about it. I think it's going to be really cool. So. Thank you, Sam. Uh, it's incredible the amount of work that Sam and so many other people do to prepare for our time of worship that we can share with you each week. We really appreciate God working through them. Yeah, that is so, that is so true. And those worship Wednesdays, Wednesdays have been great. So please join in for that. Be ready to put your song in the comments. Got a feeling you better get it in early because there's going to be a lot of requests out there. Uh, this morning, as I said, our 10 before 10 is a little different. Usually we've got a 10 before 10 top 10 list. But this morning we have something that I'm sure you're going to appreciate much more than our opinions on some abstract idea. So this morning we're going to talk about, um, we're going to look at our, our graduates, our middle school, high school, and college graduates. Uh, we want to honor them in some way, even in this unique culture that we have uh, this morning. So we're going to do that at the end of the 10 before 10, so please stick around before that before we move into worship. So uh, before that time, we have just a few announcements we want to share with you. And you know why everything is changing and it feels so different. We know it's a lot harder to connect. And so we'd love for you to continue to stay connected to us, to what's going on and even connected to each other. You can do that uh, by looking through social media. You can go back and specifically look at kind of the four phase plan that we've been talking about. And I think probably right now we're somewhere around the 1.5 oh, yeah. on that yeah, phase four exactly. plan. And in all, all honesty, we're just kind of looking to the Lord as much as we're looking to anything else to figure out when to move to those other phases. But uh, we certainly want you to be included. And so you're going to, to have uh, a survey coming out this week. Yeah. We'd love for you to participate in that, to sign it. The more people that do that, the better. So that we can know where you are. Since we don't get to see you every week, we want to hear from you. So yeah. please make an effort to do that this week. Yes, please. Definitely definitely do that. Give us your thoughts. Give us where you are. And another good way to do that is in your groups. If you're if you're involved in a group, I would encourage you to stay connected to them. I know it's difficult during this time. I know video is not the ideal way, but it has been good in so many instances. So please, if you haven't been connected, jump back in with your group. Get connected on video. Get connected to them in some way. They're having conversations right now about what it might look like for the group to meet in the future, so you want to be involved in that. And also, if you're not in a group, this would seem like an awkward time to join, but it's also a great time to join because you can jump on with the group 
and just blend right in because people are kind of in and out at this se in this season. So you can jump right in with the group and just kind of know where they are and catch up with them and join them in this season and get connected. Yeah, and one of the one of the most difficult things I think for me has been keeping my kids connected, and so yeah. we've been you know zooming people and talking to people, family, friends, things like that. Uh, but the Collides Kids Ministry has just been doing an excellent job. Uh, awesome. Kayla is just on it; she's putting out so much information and uh, so much stuff that's actually helpful to parents during this time. And I know it's tough to make the time to go through all of that stuff, but something special that's coming up is Code Blue Kids, and that's coming up on June fourteenth. At one o'clock and so you can watch with your kids one o'clock yeah. june 14th make that plan june Put that 14th on the yeah one yeah, o'clock there's going to be a special packet that you can pick up here from the church before that actually happens uh, talk to your kids about it you know get them excited about it go ahead and, and contact kayla if you have any questions about that and you can find more information about that on social media on the collide kids page and uh, you know keep praying for the leaders for those yes, that are no. just pouring out there to your kids also, uh, Collide students, you know, 7th yeah. through 12th grade, we've got uh, stuff happening every week after the message where they try to connect to the, the young people. We really appreciate that. So Instagram is a great place to connect with them. You can watch the, the message recap, and uh, there's a lot of stuff going online. Now, something specific for them, the parents of the students, we'd love for you to mark your calendar yeah. for Sunday, June the 28th. Yeah at five o'clock. Sunday, June the 28th at five o'clock, there's gonna be a parent meeting that evening. Don't know exactly what that's gonna look like right. yet. Uh, in the COVID world, the 28th is a yeah. long ways away, but go ahead and be ready for that because it is coming and we'll have more information about that when, uh, when, we, when we know everything. Yeah, that's great. Please stay connected to both of those ministries. They're doing a great, a great work. They're doing some great material for you to connect with them. So put those two dates on your calendar and please plan to reach out. And moving from our students, that's kind of a natural place to move into what we want to share with you today about our graduates. Uh, we just want to express our congratulations to them. We wish we could do that in person, uh, but we just want to say that and let you know that your church is proud of you and we value your accomplishments. And we're going to be reaching out to you during the next couple of weeks and leaving a gift on your porch or by your front door. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, just a small way to, again, express our congratulations. And also this morning, we're going to have a slideshow as we end here and it goes into worship. Right before that, we're going to have a slideshow that uh, just shares with you our middle school, high school, and college graduates. And again, if we missed you, we apologize. We've done our best to reach out to as many people as we can, but I'm sure we probably have missed somebody in the process. And I just want to say that we're sorry for that in advance uh, if we did. But I also just ask you as our graduates come up to just be thinking about them, reach out to them, encourage them. Uh, and I'd, I'd, I do want to say thank you to two of our graduates who really put this slideshow together. Peyton and Maggie really did this and put it together for us. So I want to say thank you to them for that. And thank you for joining us for our 10 uh, before 10 this morning. Enjoy the slideshow. Take the opportunity to pray for our graduates mm -hmm. as you see them come across the screen and uh, be prepared and, and worship both to express your joy and to learn about having more of that joy, even in circumstances that you may not appreciate too much. Yeah, exactly. Thank you again for joining us.
Collide family. If you don't know me, my name is Mark and I serve as the pastor at our North Iredale location. And I want to say thank you so much for tuning in uh, to join us for worship today. We really are anticipating the work that Jesus is going to continue to do uh, within our hearts uh, as we open up his word and just get to worship him together. But during this time, uh, I just want to transition briefly into a time of offering. 
which just really just allows us to connect our giving to our mission and just really just providing some updates about uh, the impact that your generosity is having in our community and in our world. Uh, first off, I just want to say thank you so much for the way that you have been generous at church. It really has been incredible. Uh, now for the fifth consecutive month, we have actually exceeded our budget at the church, which is incredible. I was just talking to Pastor Jamie before this, and uh, to our knowledge, that's the first time that uh, that has ever occurred in our church, and so it really is incredible, particularly in the season that we are in, uh, just to see how generous that you have been. And as um, people continue to give, we're able to essentially pour more money back into our communities and into mission efforts around the world. Uh, So what a joy and what a blessing that is uh, to be in a church that is really valuing generosity and just valuing uh, the work of God's mission around the world. Uh, Something I wanted to just read for you from the uh, book of 2 Corinthians, uh, where Paul speaks about generosity, uh, comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 7 through 8, and says, Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, uh, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. And so right here we see that Paul is saying this is not something that we should view as something we have to do because we have to, but rather it's a grace-filled response to the gospel. And the work that Jesus has done in our hearts, that compels us to actually be generous people because of the grace that we have experienced. We want to see that grace be extended to others. And so I just want to mention a few ways uh, that you can give to the mission of our church. Uh, we have the, the online option. That's something you can set up as a single gift or something that is recurring. We also have a text message option that is available or the physical mail-in as well at P.O. Box 151 uh, at our Yakinville locations address. And so, again, I want to commend you for your generosity and let's continue to be generous as we endeavor for the mission of God to move forward and that more lives will be changed by the power of Jesus. So at this time, I'll invite you just to pray with me and then we'll continue to worship Jesus together this morning. Let's pray. Uh, Lord God, we love you. We thank you for the grace that you have poured out upon us through the death and the resurrection of your son, Jesus. And because uh, of this reality, it has literally changed everything for us. And I pray that we would live in light of that. I pray that everything in our lives would reflect that, including our generosity and how we spend our finances, God. So I pray that the money that has been brought in uh, to the ministry of our church, God, that you would bless that, that you would use it for your kingdom purposes. And also, I just pray that you would just continue to cultivate in our hearts here at your church just a spirit of generosity, uh, seeking uh, to give sacrificially uh, in order that the gospel of Jesus might spread further and that more people will have their lives impacted because of his gospel. And so we thank you for that. We trust you in these things. And we ask that you just continue to be with us as we worship you together this morning. We ask these things in Jesus' good name. Amen.
All right, good morning, everybody, and thank you so much to Collide Worship. I want to go ahead and let you guys know uh, they're going to be back for a song at the end uh, of our time today, so don't tune out early or you're going to uh, miss them. I just want to say thanks to them. They do an amazing job each and every week, and as many of you heard earlier, they're going to be actually be live for Worship Wednesday this Wednesday at uh, 9 o'clock, so live songs, taking some requests, so be sure to uh, tune in for that. And also, I just ask you guys to honor them. Uh, get some likes and loves in the comments for them uh, right now. Uh, tag those people who are putting in the work. Reach out to them personally with a message, or maybe it's a card or a text, and let them know uh, how much you appreciate what they're doing. They do a whole, whole lot uh, each and every week to, for us to have worship. So we're very thankful uh, for what they do. That being said, I want to say welcome. Uh, my name's Jamie. I'm one of the pastors here at Collide. I am the Yakimville location pastor, so I spend most of my days making sure things are up and running well as they should be throughout the week here uh, at Yakimville, doing ministry and connecting with the community uh, as well. So thank you guys, as Pastor Mark mentioned, who are continuing to give during this time. It's allowing us to do all kinds of amazing ministry and reach out and help people uh, and families in need right now. So thank you guys for, uh, for giving and supporting us. Us. Also, I just want to be uh, just open and honest and, and say that we as a church, we as your staff and your pastors and your elders, we grieve uh, with the senseless murder of George Floyd and what's going on in Minneapolis and now all across the nation. Uh, we mourn with those who are hurting. Uh, we don't understand uh, the response that's going on in a lot of places, but uh, honestly, I can't. we can't understand uh, what many of our uh, brothers and sisters of color have gone through for years and years. So uh, we do mourn and grieve with them. And I just ask you all to be in prayer for our nation and be be part of the change, uh, be part of the solution. Don't be part of the the problem. So we we see what's going on. We mourn. We're praying, and we hope that you guys will join us uh, in that as well. With that being said, we're going to jump back in uh, to going verse by verse through Philippians. This is our eighth week uh, of this series as we're learning how to unlock the secret to finding joy. And today we're going to finish up chapter 3 as we learn how to find joy in the journey of following Christ here in this life. And it's my goal today that you guys will walk away uh, with six very practical application points uh, from the words of Paul that will help you better experience that joy that again is found only in Christ as you journey through uh, this life. So wherever you are, uh, I ask you to invite you to open up your copy uh, of the Bible of God's Word and turn to Philippians chapter 3, and we're going to start in verse 12. As always, uh, you can uh, find the scripture and a place to take notes there on the uh, Collide Church app uh, as well. So verses 12 through 16, Paul says, Not that I have already obtained all this or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. All of us then who are mature should take such a view of things. And if on some point you think differently, uh, that too God will make clear to you. Only let us live up to what we have already attained. So the first thing we see here uh, in this passage uh, is that Paul starts off with a very honest assessment of where he's at on his journey. He begins by saying, not that I've already obtained all this. So we've got to start and ask the question, obtain what, Paul? What are you referring to? What are you talking about? What have you not obtained yet? So we need to look back to what uh, Pastor Nick shared with us last week and see what Paul is striving to 
obtain. If you remember from last week, Paul has lots of things he's striving after, and we don't have time to dig into all that, but uh, you can go back and get on our website or our app and listen to uh, the message from last week that Nick gave and also all the messages uh, in this series uh, as well, if you're just now tuning in uh, and joining us today. Uh, so I want to focus on what he said in verses 10 and 11, the two right before this passage. He says in verses 10 and 11 of chapter 3, I want to know Christ, yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow attaining to the resurrection from the dead. So Paul's ultimate goal is to know Christ and become more like him. And that's a goal we all can and should get behind and try to emulate as well. So that's his goal, but he says again in verses 12 and 13, he hasn't gotten there yet, right? He hasn't obtained it. Or as verse 13 says, he has not taken hold of this yet. So basically, Paul is able to step back and say he's got goals and he hasn't reached them yet. Uh, He's able to honestly say, I want to do this and I'm trying, uh, but I haven't got there yet. So first of all, I challenge... uh, each of you watching to make sure that you know what you're living for or maybe who you're living for. Uh, Are you living for yourself uh, or for your family? Are you living to attain success or status or just to accumulate stuff? Or are you living as Paul is, living to know Christ? And I believe if you're living to know him, uh, then you'll also be living to make him known as well. So take some time. I challenge you guys to dig into our uh, discussion questions. They're available there on the app as well uh, with your group this week. And before you meet with your group, take some time to prayerfully and honestly uh, work through them. Uh, And as was mentioned, the 10 before 10, if you don't have a group, it may seem like an odd time to join one, but it's not. Uh, Everything's a little different right now, so it's not any more odd than anything else that's happening uh, right now. If you don't have a group and you uh, aren't able to find one yet, Uh, Find someone in your life this week who will be able to uh, shoot you straight and give you an honest assessment uh, of where you are in your life and what your priorities are. Uh, And right now, what what do you think those who know you best would say you're living for? Uh, And what what would you say, what would you actually say that you're uh, living for? As a Christian, is your mission the Great Commission? Is it to make disciples? If so, how are you living that out in your daily uh, life and all that you go about doing, where you live, where you work, and where, you're, where you play? Uh, Mom or dad, how are you ministering to your kids? Are you training them up in the ways of the faith? Now, as a church, as Collide Church, we strive to live out the Great Commission by being a place where God and people collide in a powerful way, in a way that's noticeable to others. We believe that when people meet God, that there should be an evident change in their life. You should be able to see uh, the difference. And this mission drives us uh, to decide what we do and also to decide what we uh, don't do. So thinking about you, uh, your life, individually, your family, uh, what's your mission? Uh, What are you striving to live for? And if you never considered this, then right now during this, what I call the uh, COVID chaos, is a perfect time uh, to make an honest assessment uh, and a great time to set some new goals and implement changes uh, in your life. And maybe I would ask you to prayerfully uh, consider a mission statement for yourself and for uh, your family as well. So going right along with, uh, with that honest assessment is a humble attitude. Uh, so thinking back to the, also again to Nick's message last week, he gave a list of all the things that Paul uh, was able to have confidence in, uh, in his flesh. Uh, basically, Paul, I'll, I'll say it this way, he was like the high honor student who was part of every club possible, and he somehow played quarterback on the football team while also being the drum major of the marching band, right? This guy had, had done it all. He had all the accolades, but Instead of focusing on this list, Paul refers to himself in 1 Timothy as the chief of sinners. Now, if we're honest, Paul did have a rough past. He did persecute and kill Christians uh, before he found Jesus. Uh, But then he went on to uh, become the man who's likely the greatest missionary the world has ever known and to write uh, over half of the New Testament. So if Paul, if this man, uh, this great follower of Jesus, can refer to himself as the chief of sinners and honestly say he hasn't arrived yet as a Christian, uh, then we definitely can 
as well. And if we're honest, uh, if we're not careful as we begin to do the right things and we begin to live for God, we can begin to forget uh, who or why we're, who for or why we're doing these things in the first place. Um, when things get good, we can forget our need for God. We need to be reminded of what Paul said uh, a few verses back in Philippians 2-3 that uh, Pastor Brent talked about a few weeks ago. And that verse says, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourself. So have that humility and also the acronym that Nick mentioned at the beginning of this series, joy, Jesus, others, and yourself. If you think of things and priorities in that order, humility is going to be a natural byproduct. Finally, from this passage, uh, we need to have a high aim Paul says in verse 14 that he's pressing on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called him heavenward in Christ Jesus. Paul's aiming for heaven. I believe he's looking forward to being in heaven one day as his final destination, but also he's looking toward heaven as he lives his life day in and day out. His standard, again, is to be more like Christ, to know him and to make him known. He's aiming to honor Christ with his life and then to spend eternity glorifying him in heaven. Paul has set high goals. His aim is not something small or easily attained, and he's challenging himself to reach that high goal and to reach toward the things of heaven. So as you think through your honest assessment of where you are and where you want to be, think about what it will take to get there and what changes or challenges uh, you're going to face as you get there. Also, Paul reminds us of the grace shown to us in verses 15 and 16. He references those who are mature in their faith, uh, and that's a reminder that we're all at different points uh, in our faith. Some have known Christ longer, some are, have grown faster. We're all at different points uh, in our faith. We don't all know as much as others in our church or a small group or a family, so we need to be examples for each other. And also, we need to extend grace to those who maybe are not as mature in their faith as we are. Uh, Paul says in verse 16, we should live up to what we've already attained. Basically, we should do what we know we should do and not do what we know we shouldn't. And as we grow in our faith or we're more sanctified during that process of sanctification, we should day in and day out more closely follow Jesus Christ. When we fall short and we fail, we should receive the grace that's given to us and get back up and try again. Now, if people aren't careful, maybe they miss church for a few uh, weeks or they miss a few quiet times or they fall short as a spouse or a parent, uh, they may just decide to, to give up or to think that living for God isn't worth it. Let's not be those people. When we fall down, uh, let's get back up, dust ourselves off and remember that high aim that we're searching for and just get right back to it. So I challenge you all to take time for an honest assessment uh, and do all that you do with a humble attitude and have a high aim in your lives as well. So next in verses 17 through 21, we find three practical ways we can live out the things we discussed in the previous section uh, of verses. So here Paul says in verses 17 through 21, Join together in following my example, brothers and sisters, and just as you have us as a model, keep your eyes on those who live as we do. For as I have often told you before and now tell you again, even with tears, many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their destiny is destruction, their God is their stomach, and their glory is in their shame. Their mind is set on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven, and as we eagerly and we eagerly await a savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control, will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. So the first thing we see here uh, from Paul is to follow your example. He starts off this section of his letter by challenging the Philippians to follow his example and the example of those who were living as he is. And we all need an example to follow. It's how we learn. It's how we learn things in this life, by watching others and by emulating what they are doing. Elsewhere, uh, in 1 Corinthians 11, 1, Paul writes, Follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. And Jesus himself in Matthew 4, 19 uh, says to his disciples, Come follow me, and I will send you out to fish for people. 
Um, Pastor Tony Marita, he says, when it comes to the supreme model for a Christian lifestyle, there is no debate. Paul points us directly to Jesus and tells us to have the same humble attitude that was manifested in him. Jesus is the supreme model. We need to follow him, and we do that by learning more uh, about him through studying his word. Also, we need to find other examples that we can follow, those in our lives that we know are striving to live like Christ. Now, it can be really easy in this day and time to try uh, to be what I would call a lone ranger Christian, where you strive to live your life, and particularly your faith, all on your own. That's really tough to do. For honest, it's really impossible to do that. It's also really tough to try and live out uh, what I would call an internet faith, Obviously, right now, uh, in some sense, we're all having to do that. You guys are watching uh, online uh, right now, uh, but that's not the way things uh, should be. So kind of as a way to illustrate this point, uh, some of you guys, uh, and ladies particularly, you uh, hop on to Pinterest and you find an example of a home renovation project uh, or something to cook or to bake, and you, uh, you t- try to recreate that or to make it better. Uh, this is my wife. She can do this. She does it very, very well. And we've, we've uh, taken on some of those projects during this quarantine season. Is anybody out there with me? Let us know if you've been taking on uh, those projects as well. But on the other hand, uh, some of us, uh, myself, uh, the category I would fall into would be uh, we find something online that we want to try to do, and then we totally bomb uh, our efforts to make it on our own. This is commonly referred to as a Pinterest fail. So if any of you may have happened to do this, I would love, love, love to see some photo evidence of that. Send that to us, throw those in the comments, and we can share in our failures together because, again, this is where I would fall into. Uh, Also, you can find uh, videos on YouTube basically to do just about uh, anything. Uh, I've seen this, and and as I've done projects, I've found ways to do uh, things that have helped me out uh, tremendously, helped me do projects around the house uh, as well. Uh, These can work, but, man, it is so much better to have someone there in person showing us how uh, to do things correctly and learning from their example that we see uh, face-to-face. This can be my dad for me. He'd come over and show me how to do something that's way uh, more beneficial to me in the long run than watching somebody do something on, on YouTube. So this example can easily apply to our faith as well. Uh, those who are stronger in their faith, uh, they should be examples to those around them who are weaker. Uh, we all need an example, and we need to find one. Everyone has something they can teach someone else, and we all have way more that we can learn. So let's be an example, and let's have one to follow as well. As we do this, we'll find out that both the stronger and the weaker will actually teach each other. Uh, Borrowing uh, an idea from leadership guru Simon Sinek, uh, he says, mentoring is a two-way street. Mentor relationships are not teacher-student, but mentor-to-mentor. Both sides have something to offer. Uh, When I talk to people who are at different levels of faith than me, they have something to offer that I don't, and they think in ways that I never will. I learn from them, and I hope that they learn from me uh, as well. So who are you looking to for spiritual advice, uh, and who are you uh, investing in to be an example for? If you have someone that you're investing in, uh, someone who's investing in you, find a way this week and tell them thank you and keep learning from them. And if you're leading someone, encourage them this week and also look for ways that you can teach them uh, as well. If you neither have someone investing in you or someone you're investing in, uh, begin to pray that God would bring those people into your life. And don't be afraid to ask people if they'll step in and be that person that, uh, that you need. If you are leading someone, bring them into your life. Do ministry with them. Have them in your home uh, and your life and live out your faith so that they can see it and learn from it. Next, we need to remember uh, to forget not your enemies. We've got enemies out there. Paul reminds us that there are people out there who are against us uh, and the things of Christ. Ultimately, if we're striving to live as Paul and better know Christ and make him known, we are going to face opposition from Satan. Satan will use any means he can to battle against us, and many times that will include using other people. We've got to remember that we don't battle against other people, or as Paul says in Ephesians 6.12, 
For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. So we've got to remember that we do have an enemy, that that enemy is not any person or group uh, of people. So think about that in in the midst of all that's going on that I mentioned earlier. uh, People are not our enemies. The devil himself is our enemy. But we've got to be aware that there is indeed a battle going on, and too many times we just don't think about that. Uh, Things are hard, and we don't know why. People are against us, and we don't know why. We struggle to do the things we want to do, and we don't know why. Life isn't easy, and we don't know why. Uh, It's because there is an enemy. We cannot forget that. Uh, We've got to have a balance in that, though. We tend to either give our enemy, the devil, either too much credit or not enough credit. So if we give him too much credit, we will give in and forget that our God is much more powerful than our enemy. We'll just think, man, I can't beat the devil. Yes, you can. Our God is more powerful. But if we don't give him enough credit, we'll forget there even is an enemy. uh, Or or we'll take out our aggression on somebody or something who's not the enemy, or we just won't fight at all. So let's, uh, let's not forget about the enemy, but let's also remember that our God is far more powerful than our enemy is. Finally, we need to fix our eyes on the right things. While Paul says that our enemies have their minds set on earthly things, he calls us to remember our citizenship isn't here on earth, but it's in heaven. We should be focused on the things above, on Jesus, on the one that we're living for. Um, And as we fix our eyes on the right things, it's going to change the way that we live our lives. Think of fixing your eyes as what you're focused on, what you're giving your attention to. So I want to challenge you guys uh, right now as we're finishing up. Find two things around you uh, in the room and try to focus your eyes on both of them. Uh, Try and focus on the screen you're watching and the door that leads out of the room you're in or your bookshelf and your kids who I'm sure are patiently watching this message uh, right now. And let me know how it's going. I was just joking earlier and try to focus on two cameras, and they're pretty close together, but man, I cannot, I cannot do that. It's probably obvious to uh, you guys. Uh, being honest, too, when I was finishing writing up this message, uh, I was trying to also listen to a podcast for a little bit, uh, and my mind was just jumping around, so I had to choose just one, right? I couldn't learn from the podcast and also uh, be faithful to write this message as well, so I had to focus on simply writing uh, the message Uh, We all know it's hard, and many times it's not smart to try and focus on two things at once, such as texting and driving. Uh, One thing I saw was watching a movie and jogging, unless you're on those trailers at the Y, I've talked about that have Netflix, right? Uh, Writing a message and listening to a podcast, uh, hard to do. Focusing on Jesus and the world, or living for God's glory and the approval of others. Uh, Even if you're good at multitasking, which I am definitely not, Focusing on one thing really makes the most sense. Having your focus truly on the things of God will bring joy to your life. So what steps do you need to take to make sure your focus is where it needs uh, to be? So uh, in conclusion, I challenge each of you to take some time and take an honest assessment of where you are right now. What are you striving after? What or who are you living for? Are you living to know Christ and to make Christ known? Maybe you need today to start your relationship with him, with Jesus, by trusting in him to be your Lord and your Savior. Jesus came to earth as a human, and he lived a perfect life we couldn't live, and he died a death that we deserve to pay the debt for our sin uh, so that we may experience a relationship with God the Father now and forever. If you haven't trusted in Jesus, I invite you to do so today by admitting that uh, you are a sinner, you've fallen short, we all have, uh, believing that Jesus indeed is God's Son who died in our place, and then confessing that belief uh, to Him and also to others as well. If you're making that decision today, post it in the comments uh, and reach out to us via message, or find someone you know that's a believer and let them know the decision that you have made today. We rejoice in that, we'd love to follow up with you uh, in that as well. So maybe you're someone who trusted in Christ long ago, but you're making that honest assessment. You would say, man, I'm not living for him right now. I know uh, that I'm not. Make today be the day that you decide you're going to live for him again. But do this with a humble 
attitude. All of us who uh, do know Christ aren't any better uh, than those who don't know him. We have just experienced the grace that is found only in Jesus. Obviously, we didn't save ourselves, and we can't live for Christ without his help as well. Also, let's decide today to have a high aim in our lives, not aiming for the things of this world, but of the things above. For you to begin to attain these things, make sure to first follow the example set before us by Jesus Christ himself and also find others who are striving to follow him and learn from their example as well. Remember, as you do this, iron will sharpen iron and both people involved will be, be strengthened in their faith. And make sure not to forget that we're in a battle and there are enemies out there with Satan being that true enemy. To help you fight this battle, fix your eyes on the things above, the things of heaven, and on Jesus who eagerly, we eagerly await to meet face to face and who is the one who will help us find joy throughout our journey. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you so much for today, for the chance to meet, even if it's virtual and online, where we eagerly await the day we can meet together in person again. Uh, but in, until that day, I just pray that uh, each person watching or listening would just do the things that we uh, talked about uh, today, uh, just having an honest assessment of where they stand right now. Maybe they, uh, they know you, but they've fallen away. Maybe they don't know you uh, at all. I pray that today would be the day they trust in your son, Jesus, for salvation. I pray that we would all aim high for the things that are not of this world, but the things that are uh, of heaven. And as we are doing this, we would find an example to follow, first being Jesus and then being somebody in our lives that, that um, can help to lead us and, and show us the right way and help us to grow more and more uh, in our faith and help us to not forget that we do have uh, an enemy. Uh, Lord, but that you've already defeated him. You are, uh, you've overcome. You're more powerful. Help us to trust in you while realizing we do have an enemy out there. And also help us to fix our eyes, again, not on the things of this world, but on the things of heaven. Have them to be focused uh, on Jesus. Uh, he's the one we're striving to, uh, to emulate and to be more like each and every day. And Lord, we just lift up the situation that's going on uh, with uh, the coronavirus and also with uh, just the... Uh, the injustice in our country, the things with George Floyd and the, uh, the senseless acts there and then the, all that's coming up, the riots and everything, Lord. We, we live in a broken world, and we're more uh, aware of that every day. Help us to be a part uh, of the change. Help us to be a difference and not be a part of the uh, problem, but be a part of the solution, God. And Lord, just help, uh, help us as we go along to uh, have chances to share uh, your love with those around us and give us the strength to do that. And we pray these things. Uh, in Jesus' name, amen. So now Kali Worship is going to lead us in the song, Good Grace. Uh, as we sing, I challenge you guys to meditate on the following lyrics. Don't let your heart be troubled. Hold your head up high. Don't fear no evil. Fix your eyes on this one truth. God is madly in love with you. Take courage, hold on, be strong, and remember where our help comes from. If any time during this song or after, uh, after it you need to respond, please post in the comments or, or send us a message or go to collidechurch.com slash respond to let us know how we can follow up with you. Let's worship now. your heart be trouble. Hold your head up. I don't feel no evil. Fix your eyes on this one truth. God is madly in love with you. Take courage, hold on, be strong. Remember where hell comes from. Jesus 
all we have for you this week first time guests if you would comment send us a message uh, go to the link on the website or the follow the tab on the app uh, you're loved and you're sent we'll see you next week